Hey guys, Too Legit City here. Today we're going to be talking about the best Draco Ranch design that I know. And in terms of efficiency, there hasn't been a better design that I've ran into that is going to outdo this Draco design. And it's because of the design and because of the Dracos requiring grazing, the design can fluctuate in the type of design you guys make. Today we're going to be going over my design that I think is the best, and we'll talk exactly about this. So to get it started, we have a couple of rooms over here. This room, we can actually add into a, another one of these rooms, and these rooms up top are shearing rooms. The room at the bottom is our breeding room where the Dracos eat, and then this is a kill box. Now to get started, we'll talk about the shearing rooms. So the shearing rooms is where all the extra Draco eggs are going to be swept to from the automation. And the Draco eggs are tied to a critter sensor right here. That if we have 20 critters, it shuts off the chute so that it goes to the other room. That makes it so that we have this room and this room filled up before the kill box actually gets delivered to. And this is a conveyor rail setup. Basically, it's just we sweep to here. If there is room for the egg, we will release it. If there's no room, it shuts off and then it goes into the second shoot. After it does that check and there's too many eggs, it's going to go into the kill box where it's going to automatically be drowned. Now, that's the conveyor rail automation really quick. And the purpose of this is so that we always have Dracos right here that we could shear, get whatever resource you want, either it's reed fiber or plastic. And having the shearing rooms makes it so that the Dracos are constantly in hydrogen, giving them a maximum scale regrowth time. And because of how it's set up, the bottom room right here is actually a breeding room. So we're going to multiply the Dracos here. And because we are not going to need any more Dracos outside of the ones in the breeding room, the extra ones can starve to death in here. And because they're in hydrogen, we'll get a good amount of resources from them before they starve. So we will get slow food. We will get the resources from the Dracos, depending on which ones you guys are ranching. And from that, the rest of them will get overflowed into the kill box. Another thing that's on top of this is that we have a auto wrangle surplus. This is actually how we are going to refill the bottom room. And what I mean by that is the Dracos over here at the bottom eventually are going to die. And we set up a critter drop off priority system where the bottom one's at priority nine set to eight critters because that's the room size of 96 tiles that's the maximum you can put inside before they get cramp or overcrowded debuffs on them and we set this one to priority seven and we set this one to 15 critters and we check the auto wrangle surplus this makes it so that if we ever go above 15 and we have this set to 20 that the extra dracos get wrangled and delivered to the other rooms Typically, you could actually play around with this. You would probably want this closer to 18, as when this is running full force, you're not going to want your ranchers coming in and wrangling five critters for no reason. But it's really up to you how you want to set this up. You could set this to 20 or not even have this on and only have one of them at auto wrangle surplus. But that's going to be something you guys could modify with the slider right there. And that's a sharing room. That's going to be how we're going to be utilizing the hydrogen environment for maximum scale growth and so that we get the resources. Now for the breeding room. Now, of course, there is a kill box. I'm not going to go into the how that works. Basically, eggs get into there. They hatch. They drown. We get food. Now, the breeding room. This is actually kind of important as the breeding room design is probably the best part about this. Because of how the, breathing ro uh, the breeding room is actually set up, hydrogen, uh, hydrogen up top, CO2 at the bottom so that we could get a little bit of scale growth here and so that the mealwoods can grow. Now we set the mealwoods to not be harvested so that the Dracos could always just graze on them. And for the most part, the benefit of having this is that if I click on a Draco, we're using something called a water lock setup right here where we minimize travel distance of the Dracos. You can see that they can't walk on the side or the ceiling of the wall. They can't even escape. And that's because of the water lock design. So by doing this, you can see that we use this as an island to get to the top level. They're going to be able to climb along the side of that. And then from there, they're going to be able to travel from the cheering room to the grooming table to the critter drop off. That allows it so that the Dracos always have a shorter travel time. Because one of the problems about having Dracos is that since they can walk on the side of the walls, if they were hiding or hanging around on the ceiling and you had to brush them, your duplicate would be calling for them and they would have to walk all the way around in order for them to get to the table. 
that means your duplicate had to spend more time standing there waiting for the Draco to show up. And you could already see they move pretty slow. So by doing this, it minimalizes travel time. We utilize all 96 tiles by using doors. We have what door set up right there just to make the uh, room a little bit smaller. And by doing this, we have a lesser need for more ranchers, meaning that I would have fewer ranchers do more jobs because they don't have to spend as much time waiting for the Drekos. So this minimizing the travel distance is really good as that makes it so that you don't have to spend as much time here. But this has been the Draco design for the best possible design that we have. You get maximum return for the shearing results. You get the most efficient design for uh, Draco's traveling and shearing and grooming. Kill box setup. Hydrogen CO2. Now, there's one last thing. There is a cooling loop to keep the room cool. We just have an aqua tuner line coming in at around 20 degrees, 19. And we have one radiant piping in the center. Because we have the radiant piping in the center, it actually holds the thermal energy. And it makes it so that it keeps the room pretty cool. The room is uh, pretty temperate at around 22. And we only just needed one radiant pipe for that. But of course, this has been my design. If you guys liked the design, have any questions about it, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.